Hello. I'm Nick. And I'm Rob. This message is for Hillary and President Bill Clinton. We just want the world to know that neither of us want to die. We've never thought about shooting ourselves in the back of the head two times or dying in a robbery where nothing is taken from us. Hillary, I I think you're sexy and beautiful. Bill? I would suck on your butthole and play your penis like a trombone. Jesus Christ, Nick. This is our declaration to the world. If we die, it was not our wishes. Bill, if you ever had a fat boy blow raspberries in your armpits while he twists your balls like a doorknob, Nick, I don't know if he would like that. We're trying to not get killed. Hillary, if you kill me, I swear to God, I will shit my pants and I will not make it easy to be moved. Thank you for tuning in to our Clinton Body Count episode. The Human Torch was denied a bank loan. <laughs> All right. Had to get my Ron Burgundy on the goal. I like it. I like Unique it New York. Unique New York. I'm the delicious Nickalicious. I have crotch crickets. I'm here with my co-host. <laughs> oh, man. Crotch crickets. That's the worst. I'm Rob Dog. I'm drinking a beer and sitting here playing with the bottle cap because I'm weird. Weird. You know what else is weird? Yes. This beard is weird, according to Eminem. <laughs> What's also weird is we're doing this Clinton well, body was, count. That was MGK, but it's okay. Okay, it's all the same. <laughs> some white guys that can't rap. <laughs> well, you're gonna ruffle some feathers. I know. I think M- I think Machine Gun Kelly is the biggest useless piece of shit. That <laughs> I fucking love him. <laughs> I think he's fucking shit, dude. I think he's a huge steaming pile of shit. Is he a juggalo? <clears throat> no. <laughs> yes. Do he used to be an ICP? Maybe. Yeah. I'm not maybe. ruling it out. Yeah. Neither am I. I have no idea what I'm talking about when it comes to pop culture. <laughs> just I know, like I know too much about pop culture. <laughs> just like Rob has no idea what he's talking about when it comes to politics. So <laughs> literally fucking nothing. Thankfully, you guys have turned into the Clinton body count episode. We're not dead yet. Almost. I did see some strange cars outside. <laughs> I think they're actually here to turn the electric off, but I think they might have been here to kill us for... Hopefully they wait until at least this is over. <laughs> yeah, let us get through this. We got some battery-operated stuff. Okay. I'm going to have to get the batteries out of my dildo. No, mine hooks up to a car battery, so we should be go. fine. <laughs> Only takes diesel. <laughs> <laughs> that's, an Amish, that's an Amish dildo right there, buddy. It runs oh, on dude. horsepower. <laughs> That'll hollow out your walls. <laughs> I'm not trying to get my walls hollered out tonight. <laughs> I would like to say thank you to our brand new Patreon subscribers. Some of you have been subscribers for a long time, but um, Patreon is a stinky pile of shit, and it's <laughs> not, I don't know, it just doesn't work very well anymore, and I didn't have time to go through and weed out the people that have been here for months. <laughs> so, first off, Jason Matt, thank you for your Patreon pledge. Congratulations for having two first names. Yes. Um. Oh, Jesus Christ. Jennifer... Machiaverna. <laughs> oh, man. I hope that's right. Yeah, I think you got it, dude. If I said that right, I deserve a drink on Jennifer's behalf. Yes. Heather Miller, thank you for your Patreon pledge, and thank you for the uh, the uh, horse cervix you sent to our P.O. box. Oh, that was her? Yes. Thank, thank you. you very much. Uh, Macy Booger, thank you very much, Miss Booger. <laughs> Web Tongue. Wait. <laughs> Web, Web Young. Webb Young. Thank you, Webb Young. What a fun name that is. That is fun. Uh, Michelle Quinn, thank you very much. Makeup Nerds. Oh, that's cute. Go check out Makeup Nerds. That sounds like a channel of some type. <laughs> Riley Anthony, thank you. And last but not least, Anakin Skywalker, thank you so much. For, <laughs> no, it's Arika Jensen. Arika Jensen. I think I got it. Sure. If you'd like to join us on Patreon, go to patreon.com slash Podcast. if you would like to send us something in a P.O. box to go on the wall of the Brohio Studios. Oh, man. Or if you want to send us a one-chip challenge, 
whatever. Or a horse cervix. Or a horse cervix. Not a whore. Well, a horse cervix. I'm not, you know, beggars can't be choosers. I'm not trying to get any stinky horse cervix in the mail, Rob Dog. Okay. We have a P.O. box. I'll take that back to my place. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Wear it out. <laughs> Jesus, there is some blue chew out there in the garage for you. <laughs> Load me up, daddy. <laughs> Uh, we have a P.O. Box to s- <coughs> the Ohio Podcast, P.O. Box 672, Vandalia, Ohio, 45377. You can go check that out. It's where all the magic happens. And there's all kinds of magical stuff in that P.O. Box. <laughs> it's just fucking, you open it up and there's just fucking crickets and flies. Yeah, the lesbian with spiky hair <laughs> at the post office hates me, and she <clears throat> loves when you guys send me weird stuff, and she <laughs> has to get it because it won't fit in the P.O. Box. Absolutely loves it. Anyways... I have a very special article for you this week, Rob Dog. Lay it on me. Sorry, there's some gnats down here. Yeah, there is, dude. They were all over me to like a soccer practice. <laughs> Fuck. You left a beer down here last week that was kind of. Oh, it was from the one chip challenge. It was from the one chip challenge. Yeah, I opened it up and couldn't even fucking drink it because yeah. my mouth was on fire. Well, it soured like uh, an old man dick. It stung yeah. so bad. <laughs> I came down here. I was like, oh, what, what is this? And I picked it up and just. A million dragonflies flew out of it. <laughs> At that point, I wasn't really concerned about the <laughs> I, beer. <laughs> I know, I know. It was pretty rough. Did we ever even talk about that? If you haven't seen the one chip challenge that I did, it is on our Facebook page. It's going strong. Yeah, it's on our YouTube as well. Yeah, it's on our YouTube. Check it out. It fucking sucked. <laughs> it, <laughs> Rob didn't die. He almost died, though. It sucked for like 10 minutes. I'm going to be totally honest. And then... I then fucking he manned up. Vomited in my driveway because he drank a <laughs> gallon of milk. And um, actually, for those people that were asking, the next day it wasn't too bad either. A lot of people were concerned about how your asshole how my feel butthole the next was. Day. Yeah, no, it was. You know what? It was no more different than if I just ate hot wings well, at a wing joint, which I do quite often. So I will say I called and checked on you about four times that day. Yeah, you did. You did. You were pretty I was concerned. Worried about you. Yeah. Not worried enough to have milk ready whenever I ate the fucking chip. Well, I didn't know it was going to be that bad. It was just a potato chip, man. Well, the tortilla. You know, well, I didn't think it was going to be that bad. I was pissed just because I fucking just opened up that beer to hopefully quench it, and it didn't. Yeah. It didn't do a thing. It made it hotter. And I said, and I wasted a whole beer. At first, you said, "That's yeah, not that bad." I no, said, I said, "Give it a second. <laughs> and then three seconds later, you said, "Oh, I need some fucking milk." You got any milk? It was, it was hot. But, like, you took that goat milk like a champion, though. Dude, I drank, like, a half gallon of milk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. And it, it just tasted so bad. That was, like, the worst part. That It was spicy. It was really, really hot. But as, as hot as it was, it was just as bad tasting. I had so many people reach out about the size of the mug. <laughs> it was the biggest That it was the size of my head? Yeah. Yeah, I liked it. Mm-mm. He didn't want me to drink out of the jug or else I could have, but... Yeah. Anyways, go into the article. I'm sorry. Drink out of my jug anytime you want, <laughs> Rob Dog. Thank you very much. You're so good, man. Seek medical treatment if you have an erection lasting more than four hours. <laughs> it's a warning spouted off quickly among a list of possible side effects during any commercial f- for erectile dysfunction drugs. Nothing more than an asterisk. An afterthought for most people. Not so much for Danny Harrop Griffiths. Pink news. Oh, yeah. Sounds like it might be about the vagina. I don't know what it's about, but it sounds pretty fucking cool. <laughs> Pink news has reported that the gay erotica writer who has previously oh, contributed articles to their website has been hospitalized for 10 days <laughs> with an erection that just won't quit. Quote, I was partying at a club, and I took a Viagra before I went, he told the site, but that was only half of the trouble. I met a nurse, presumably, a, this is presumably a, a male nurse. Okay. Does, yeah. Yeah. I met a nurse who I went home with who ended up injecting an erection enhancer into my cock. <laughs> what? <laughs> is that a thing? An erection enhancer? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Is that? Oh, I have one of those. It's called my fist. I just grab it really tight. <laughs> that sounds like kind of like you should take offense to it. Like I, you, sir, you need an erection enhancer. I've seen this before. You definitely need an erection enhancer. <laughs> Jeez. Two days later, he found himself in the hospital with a preapism. Okay. Ten days after that, he's still there. And Griffiths. Did he beat off? I don't know. Did that he fuck would, the nurse? <laughs> I don't. We should we should try and get a hold of him. Okay. <laughs> is far from the first person to find themselves hospitalized due to a constant erection. Earlier this year, a man in the U.K. was hospitalized for nine days with an erection after injuring himself in a moped crash. <laughs> what the fuck? How does that happen? 
I mean, you know I what? I know how to make this sparrow go away. <laughs> I'm taking a trip on a moped. <laughs> I'm not going to go to the hospital if I have an erection that's lasting that long. I'm not going to leave the fucking bedroom. I'm not, I'm not doing it. I'm calling off work. I'm going to turn on 50 Cent I'm and bu- I'm going to take my wife's drawers off. <laughs> yeah. I'm booking her a fucking, I'm booking her a hotel stay or a, or a hospital stay because she ain't going to be able to walk, boy. Somebody call a doctor. <laughs> In 2015, some genius took 35 Viagra pills as a joke and got stuck with a five-day boner. 35 pills, though. I feel like that's five-day boner. That's not that big a deal. That's a good one. <clears throat> 35 days, though. That's, or 35 pills. <sighs> and in one of the most harrowing recorded ac- incidents, an accident caused a seven-week erection in a man <laughs> from Dublin after he fell on his bike handlebars. <laughs> I don't get it. I don't get it either, man. What does all these crashing have to do with... Is there like a nerve in your body that gives you a constant boner? This is all uh, this is all over the pond, too. This is all in the United Kingdom. These fuckers need to stop <laughs> eating so many... Uh, so many, so many crumpets. Well, it's <laughs> the crumpets. And it's tea. It's the, or would you call them the butt trump or the butt trumpets? I can't remember. I don't know. This is one of the other episodes. They call them something really stupid. <laughs> If you're from the United Kingdom and you constantly live with an erection, write us an email, <laughs> podcast at gmail.com. Let us know what the deal is. I'm so jealous of them. I swear. They they have the cool stuff. They have the most fucked up teeth. <laughs> they have the best accents. They're one of the best They're accents. They're wonderful people. Yeah, they really are. Um, he said he's been in long enough to he wants to warn other people. My advice to anyone with a penis is to be careful when you take Viagra and don't let anyone come near your cock with an injection. <laughs> God, it's not worth it. Never would I ever have someone come with my dick at a, with a needle. Every time my wife is sick, I say, hey, uh, you could probably use a shot of Peter Sillin right now, <laughs> couldn't you? She always turns it down. One day, she's going to accept it. She's going to put it on me. Put that Peter <clears throat> Sillin in me. We were watching videos probably several months ago. Whenever we were, well, we were, we were looking at toys... You know, sexy toys. Okay. Oh, you, okay. <laughs> and then we were we ran across the fucking uh, urethra sounds, the glass tubes you put into your dick. Oh, God. And dude. I was like, how does that even work? And she's like, oh, let me show you. Oh, no. And I'm sitting there, I'm like, oh, no. Ooh. They play it like a trombone or? They just take it and just like just slide it right no, in. I'm good. Right I'm in the hard, winter. Hard pass on that. They pinch them at the end and make them talk. Yeah, turtle kisses. That's yeah, turtle kisses, yep. I'm like, no, we can't do that. Dude, one, t- one time there was a big pin laying in the bathroom when I was about seven or eight, and I tried to stick it in my dick hole, <laughs> and it was at that point that I said, I never want to put anything in my dick hole ever again. <laughs> well, I always feel bad for women because I tried to put a tampon in my ass, and it didn't work <laughs> It didn't work out too well. You got to get a running start like it's a battering oh, ram. Yes. <laughs> As you all have heard. This is the Clinton body count episode. <clears throat> I'm trying to think of how many. So far, we're, what, uh, 12 minutes in? <laughs> how many one-star reviews are we going to get about, these fuckers are nasty. <laughs> yeah, well, They're talking about tampons up yeah, their ass. Because and- there's going to be a lot of people that are hearing us for the first time. Yeah. That is the case. Welcome to the Bro Ohio podcast. <laughs> I am a huge, greasy, slimy pile of shit. I love children. I love animals. I tell you what, don't don't leave us a one star review. Just 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 keep on moving. Just oh, keep on moving. Fuck, leave us the one star. We laugh at them. <laughs> Someone left us a review this time that says, or "Sometimes this, they hurt." This past week that said, "Uh, I know Nick. He has small dick, but he go long time." <laughs> <laughs> that was a five star, though, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. Okay. <laughs> well, that's worth it. <laughs> and we only had one one star this week. It said, "They're fucking disgusting." <laughs> well, that's true. We are disgusting, and we have twelve year old humor, so we're super immature. But <laughs> we try our best. It's okay. We would try to work with what God gave us. Try being married to us. Yeah, see, it does get a lot worse. <laughs> a lot, lot worse. All right. So, let's let's get going into this. And once again, just like we said at the beginning, we are not in any way, shape, or form trying to suicide ourselves. So if something happens, <laughs> it wasn't us. Yeah, I don't want to die. I have no intentions of dying. I have no intentions of wrecking a car. I have no intentions of blowing my brains out two times. I have no intentions of wrecking on a motorcycle. I don't want to die, guys. <laughs> I don't want to die. Not at all. And one other thing I want to get out of the way, as far as political leanings, Rob literally has no fucking clue what's going on in the political world. No, not at all. I don't care. It's like he lives in a bomb shelter 
I'm like Patrick Starr in SpongeBob. I literally live under a fucking he rock. Has no idea. I said, no. let's do the Clinton body count. He's like, who? <laughs> he has no idea. I, on the other hand, I pay about 5% attention, I would say. Okay. <clears throat> I will say, though, that this past week, I did listen to the uh, H3 podcast with uh, Andrew Yang who's run for the Democratic Party. And I also listen to the Joe Rogan while well, I'm in the middle of listening to the Bernie, oh, Bernie Sanders, Sanders, Joe Rogan. Yeah. So I'm kind of, I'm, I'm yeah. trying, I'm trying sure. to, you know, even though, even though it's the, the that's, left that's side more than I did this week, but Hey, I mean, it's a lot more than I did. I'm keeping an open mind. My wife just came in with cookies. They're all for me. Rob's eating another cupcake. Mm-hmm. I'm going to purposely sit here and slap my lips the entire time I'm eating it. All right. All right, go ahead. That's how everyone's going to, they're gonna fucking unsubscribe. That's what's gonna happen. <laughs> uh, and another full dis- full disclosure here: I have a horrible head cold, <laughs> and I dumped all my meds in right before this, uh, right before the show. So if I'm extra sniffly, I'm sorry, guys. I'm not gonna go back and edit out all the sniffles. Fuck that. Ain't nobody got time for that. <clears throat> Hell no. Nah. You're here with us. You're here with us. Right? Yeah. We're all friends here. Except the people that give us one stars. Yes, fuck you. <laughs> so we're going to kind of start with a timeline here. We're going to give you a brief timeline, Hillary and Bill. Okay. Just to kind of lay out the stepping stones of their life. So, uh, 1975, while attending Yale University, Bill met Hillary Rodham. <laughs> Rodham. <laughs> I think, I think it's Rodham, but no, I think it's Rod Ham. <laughs> okay, I just think about someone getting punched in the vagina with a handful of ham. Just it's just it's it's two words that could potentially mean wiener, <laughs> but put together, oh, Rod and Ham. Bill met Hillary Rod Ham. They were married in 1975 and had their only child, Chelsea, in 1980. Boy, does she look like she got in the face with a bag of what the fuck. She's uglier than sin, isn't she? She looks just like both of them. Jesus Christ. Uh, 1976, Clinton returned home to Arkansas after graduating from Yale. He ran for the House of Representatives, and while he lost the election, he was appointed to the Attorney General's office. And in 1978, two years later, Bill ran and won the election for Arkansas governor in 1978. Arkansas. Arkansas. He became the youngest Arkansas governor in history, and his time in office was mostly positive. What the fuck is there to do in Arkansas? <laughs> Die. Fuck cows. Get killed by the Clintons. I don't know. If you live in Arkansas and you fuck cows, <laughs> send us an email. <laughs> Prohiopodcast at gmail.com. Let us know how that cow's Just udders feel. Grab a hold of them milk bags and hold on for dear life, buddy. Just get a good suck going on. Yeah, God, yes. In 1980, <laughs> Mr. Clinton served as governor for 10 more years, or I'm sorry, for more than 10 years. He led a state in education reform as well as attempted a health care reform. In 1992, Clinton joined the presidential race but had little hope of winning as President Bush had an 80% approval rating. However, when President Bush went back on his promise to not raise taxes... His approval rating fell, and Clinton was able to move in. Swooped right in. And then in 1993, President Clinton's first term in office got off to a uh, prosperous... Preposterous. I thought that's what I thought. I thought you were going to say. When he immediately signed into law the Family Medical Leave Act of 1993, the public rallied around him, and his popularity grew. Some of you may have heard this called the FMLA Act. Yeah. Very familiar in the workplace. 1997, President Clinton ran once again in the 1996 presidential election. He won an easy victory as his popularity in office continued. But then in 1998, after accusations arose over the Lewinsky scandal, Clinton faced impeachment. However, the Senate held a trial and found him not guilty. Then in the year 2000, though he had recently gone through impeachment and the Lewinsky scandal, the country continued to love old slick Willie. When he left office, his approval ratings were at 68%. Eh, it's above 50, so <sighs> not bad at all. Now, I do have a timeline for um, uh, Hillary here. It's a little mostly the same, but the only thing to keep in mind is in the year 2000, she was elected to the U.S. Senate from New York. Um, in 2006, she seeked re-election but it's all mostly the same thing she was um 
she was the HRC, the HRC Chair of Healthcare Task Force, appointed by Bill Clinton there in 1993. She was very active during her husband's presidency, which is one reason that she was thought to be the perfect candidate when she ran against uh, old the, the Cheeto Man, <laughs> the Orange Man, a few years back. She was thought to be a shoot in a shoe in for the presidency against him, <laughs> which when the two of them were running against one another. I made the Facebook post. I said, it's like trying to decide whether lighting your asshole on fire or drinking bleach. <laughs> Between, I sure. didn't I didn't vote. I didn't. I don't fucking care. <clears throat> nope. I didn't care. Still don't fucking care. I didn't vote. Say what you want. Then you can't fucking do it. You can't complain about anything. I don't complain about anything. I go to work. I punch the clock. I put in my hours. I feed my family. I come home. I make this stupid podcast. Rinse, shit, repeat. That's what the Nicolicious does. I just wrote in John Stamos. (laughs) John Stamos. Didn't work. Didn't work. (laughs) I love John Stamos. (laughs) Who doesn't? Aunt Becky's going to prison, though. Fuck her. (laughs) No, really. I mean, I would, but... Yeah. One of the... (laughs) She's... I mean, her and Jennifer Aniston is my all-time... Yeah. Jennifer Aniston just... She defies... Age. She defies something. She's she gets hotter as she gets older. Speaking of them ten hour boners, <laughs> man, Whew. hot diggity dangle dog. I've released a lot of seed to her. I mean, wait, what? <laughs> Some, I mean, no, something like that. Yeah. So we're not here to to lecture you guys about what the Clintons. They're exceptionally well established, a, a political power couple. Oh yeah, they've seen it all. They've done it all. But with being in politics. For that length of time comes a lot, a, a very large black cat cloud that's going to hover over your head for most of your life. Mm-hmm. It is my honest opinion that most politicians are fucking crooks. I think they <laughs> yeah, do. Yeah. I think they do bad shit. I think they take bribes. Definitely, there's no no doubt. It's. I think that um, it's a very corrupt system. I think there needs to be um, time limits on all public offices, which is not the case. Um, you know, my our opinions don't matter. So like I said, we're not here to lecture, lecture you on all their accomplishments. We're here to talk to you about the dozens upon dozens upon dozens upon dozens of people that have killed themselves or were helped to kill themselves or died that were close associates of the Clinton family. So for you listeners at home, I want you to think about all of the times that you've went to a funeral. I can think on two hands, probably, how many funerals I've been to in my entire life. Some of them weren't even people I know. It was just to show support of a close friend or close Mm -hmm. family member. Yeah. These, the Clinton family, (laughs) okay? (laughs) I should, when I say the Clinton family, I mean uh, old uh, Willie and Hillary. Willie and Hilly? (laughs) Willy and Illy. <laughs> Illy Willy. Yeah, they they tend to uh either hang around with people that are about to die or people that, you know wanna die. They leave a dead body like trail. So that, like back to what I was saying. Think about how many funerals you've gone to in your life. I can count on one hand for me. Okay. So. Yeah, I'd say eight to ten is probably the average for the right. average listener, I would say. At last check. There are approximately nine, and I lost fucking count, okay? There's more than this. There are 92-ish people, 92, close to 100, that range from at least acquaintances all the way to close associates that have died under what we'll call questionable circumstances. They'll play devil's advocate, though. These, These two are, like, 130 years old. So, and, like I said, they're well-traveled. Yeah. So we're not going to go through 92 deaths. Yeah. <laughs> we're going to go through uh, 20 or 30 that you say, holy fucking shit, you know. Right. Something that, that seems have, suspicious. Might have had something to do with this. There were ones that I left out. Um, a lot of doctors. There's a lot of service members that right after they performed trips with them, Right after they flew Air for uh, Air Force One or Marine One, you know the helicopter. I think that's the helicopter Marine One. Right after they flew them places, these guys died in crashes or were mysteriously killed. Man. A lot of stuff like that that I left out. Okay, 
I left in most of the stuff that directly is their fingers are very close to the crime scene, what I believe. Right. Okay. Okay. Um, let's go by the numbers real quick. Sure. Of these 92-ish acquaintances and close associates, 21 were suicides. <laughs> 22 of them were former bodyguards and escorts. 56 of them were military and law enforcement officials. Eight of them were investigative journalists. Seven women that were interns, assistants, or people claiming they had had affairs with Bill Clinton. <laughs> Whew, five, get it, Bill. <laughs> five fundraisers, 13 <laughs> lawyers, 23 witnesses, as in people that claim they knew they had, um, they had, what's the word I'm looking at? Incriminating, uh, yeah, incriminating witness evidence testimony or, okay. that could possibly <clears throat> bring charges against Bill and Hillary. Can't have that. Witness, 23 witnesses, mysteriously dead, five medical associates, and 11 political staffers. We're obviously not going to be able to cover all of these. That would take days and several episodes, possibly several weeks. Let's let's talk about the important thing here, which we kind of just glanced over. Seven women that were interns, assistants, or people claiming they had affairs with Bill. This Whoa. fucking crib keeper is just slanging that back, wrinkled dick. Back in the day, he, he was really getting it down, but... Whew. That saxophone, man. The women go crazy for that saxophone playing. Think about coming home from a long, hard night. <laughs> to Bill Clinton. <laughs> Looks like a fucking no, one of the no, one no. of the California raisins. <laughs> I was at the office all day. I was tired. I was had a crick in my neck all night. I was, thought, kept on thinking about coming home and how what I was going to do to your pussy. And then I opened up the door and I saw that you are Hillary Rodham. That's what grossed me out, so I left. <laughs> I went to my intern's apartment. We ate pizza. We watched 90210. She sucked my dick. <laughs> she spit on it. When's the last time you spit on my wiener? Old Rod Ham? <laughs> probably doesn't. No. I think that she's probably had sex with him one time. <laughs> and it was that mutant Chelsea they made. He's got... Fucking, he, anytime he's around her, he has a fucking desert dick. <laughs> it gets hard and it cracks like <laughs> like, w- like winter lips. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> okay. So, like I said, we're obviously not going to be able to cover all these people that have potentially been killed at the hands of the Clintons. With that being said, some of these of the 92 were in absolute reach and were excluded from the research for that exact reason. Just like any internet conspiracy there was a lot of false claims to wade through while examining the research, which I tried my best to do to not get all of my research from the same uh, same place. I went to a lot of different, a lot of different places to find my research. So, uh, yeah, and and why is that? <laughs> I'll tell you why that is. <laughs> okay, thank you. So I'm going through Google last night, <laughs> and I keep on typing in um, Clinton body count. So type in clinton body count on your google search engine nothing's going to come back that's going to have any relative information of what you're trying to find anything we're talking about right now is not going to come back via a google search okay so i had to start thinking outside the box because i never use anything besides google right i've got chromecasts yeah. in my house i've got google homes i've got a chromebook i've got a google pixel um i'm down with google if you know what i mean so i'm i trust google I don't really trust Google. I hope no one fucking kills me after this episode, Google, <laughs> if you're listening. <laughs> We're really not worth it, I mean. <laughs> no. So it's the same repeating things. That kind of, it's, a, it's an article, a <clears throat> recent article from Vox about how it's a conspiracy and how it's, you know, Snopes.com, it's fake. None of it's true. All of these fucking people are dead, and there's all direct links. So riddle me this, riddle me that. Yeah, and especially with, you know, which we're going to get into, the whole Epstein thing, like, just happening, that's, you look on, like, Facebook or any other social media, that's all the memes are. It is. It's and just about him conveniently, you know, suiciding. <laughs> You're right. And then finally, I did a Google, I'm like, I need a different browser. And I started looking it up. When I'm trying to find this alternate browser, you know, which I've never done before, I've never attempted to use it Um the my phone starts fucking glitching. I shit you not. I'm typing. I'm hitting keys, and letters clear on the other side of the keyboard are shooting onto the screen. <laughs> my phone would not spell out what I was trying. I was not high. I was not drunk. I was not retarded. I knew what I was trying to do, and I knew I was doing it correctly, but it wasn't working. Why? 
I don't know. But finally, I stumbled upon a little uh, search engine called DuckDuckGo. <laughs> okay. And it is fantastic for these things. I Googled the Vegas shooter. I, I'm sorry. I did a, performed a search in that browser for the Las Vegas shooter. I performed a search for all this different stuff, and it all came back huh. right off the rip. Useful, uh, insightful articles about the facts contained within the cases we're examining. Hmm. So DuckDuckGo is a go. They don't track you. They don't want your information. You don't get cookies. You don't get... Um, you know, the ads that are specific for you. Yeah. The stuff doesn't happen on DuckDuckGo. So I said, fucking fuck a fucking duck. <laughs> excellent, excellent information here. Cool. But let's start with our first murder victim, <clears throat> or shall we say, first one to enter the Clinton body bag. Okay, let's go. All right. This first one is Susan Coleman. She was killed on February 15th of 1977. While she may be the first one to die, she is one of the most damning people of all of the stories held within the research here. Susan Coleman, who was pregnant at the time of her death, was rumored to have had an affair with Clinton while he was still Arkansas Attorney General. Clinton had been Coleman's law professor at the University of Arkansas in Fayetteville. So she was a student. He was doing the teaching, if you know what I'm saying, Rob Dog. Oh, I know. He said, don't you come over here, and I'm going to dick you down real good. I wonder how Bill Clinton does the dirty talk. <laughs> how do you feel about two-inch boners? <laughs> want to see my wiener? I'm going to teach you the A, B, C's, and D's. <laughs> my D. I just, one thing I like to think about is uh, just think about your grandma or your mom and your dad. And just think about what their dirty talk would sound like. <laughs> oh, God. If I'm bored. <laughs> hey, honey, I'm going to do the dishes tonight. <laughs> oh, God. No. Say it again. That's not what I hear. I hear way dirtier <laughs> stuff than that. And that's my dirty talk. I just think about my dad telling my mom he's going to put his balls inside her and stuff like that. <laughs> I'm going to put my balls inside you. It's going to be nasty. Yeah. Hold on a second. Let me get this barbecue sauce off my hand. Though Coleman died of a gunshot wound to the back of her head. Yeah. And let's and let's talk about that. If you're going to suicide yourself, chances are you're not going to think to put a gun behind your head and pull the trigger. Mm-hmm. You're going to shoot yourself either in the temple, in the front of the head, mouth. in the forehead, the mouth. Yeah. So her death was ultimately ruled suicide. And at f- further on down the road, Hillary Clinton... Uh, They had a close associate named Patsy Wright. I believe she was a campaign manager of some type. She was, Hillary Clinton put her exclusively in charge of the bimbo eruptions. It was an operation to stalk, locate, and harass and intimidate any woman sexually linked to Bill Clinton. Because the the list of women sexually linked to Bill Clinton is makes this body count list look minuscule, okay? The list of women sexually linked to him is far beyond the reach of our fucking brain. Um, we see a lot of things in the current media about the things Donald Trump has done to women. Done to women. I believe he is a womanizer. I do believe that. I do believe he's treated women like garbage his entire life. Mm-hmm. Mr. Bill, on the other hand, though, I think has done some dastardly deeds to young <laughs> girls. Okay. And I think that it's probably a lot worse than what we're dealing with, with our current president. I would say it's probably a safe bet. Oh, boy. So this girl's found dead. Two gunshot <laughs> wounds. I'm sorry. One gunshot. Was it two? Was it one or two? You said one, one gunshot, gunshot wound right. to the back of the head. She's seven months pregnant and it was all, but assumed that the, child she was pregnant with was bill clinton's child oh can't have that no you can't, you can't have, have that. that you can't have. and that's what she was telling the people around her is that the child was bill mm. clinton's come on a dress is one thing but <laughs> come in a butt and get her pregnant come in a butt and get her pregnant yeah. oh you're having a butt baby congratulations <laughs> <laughs> my baby's gonna be a real stinker congratulations on your butt baby <laughs> next up this is another juicy one judy gibbs she died in 1986 she was Ooh. a penthouse model mm. she worked as a call girl in a bordello in fordyce arkansas 
Fordyce. Fordyce. Yeah, that looks right. That sounds good. Yeah. They, uh, at this bordello, they were said to run a blackmail operation there. Hmm. The They had a lot of rich clientele that would come in. Okay. And part of their shtick was to take pictures of these guys, document that they were there, ah. and then blackmail them. They'd have politicians, actors, people of, uh, you know, kind of, that were adored in the media, and they would say, hey, you're here doing bad stuff, and we got this picture for you. How much would you be willing to pay to not have this picture circulated? And that's what was said they were going to do to to Bill Clinton. Um, one of Judy's most faithful customers, according to her family, was Bill Clinton. It was alleged that there were pictures of the two having sex. Oh, God. Jeez. Can you imagine that? Send me that link. I would click on it. <laughs> she was, at the time, working with law enforcement on a drug bust and an investigation. So she was working as a confidential informant. Snitch doing different things with the law enforcement on top of she was probably in legally you know hot water over the things she was doing at the bordello yeah so she was working with the police her house mysteriously burnt to the ground with her inside of it Whew. there was no cause for the fire that was ever determined but one fishy thing about judy gibbs death she's a you know a penthouse uh, model her body was found right near the ground level floor um well, she she was found on the ground level floor right near a door that could have quickly been exited for a very easy exit from this fire. She was also uh, right near a window she could have used to get out of this house. So it doesn't make any sense that she died inside the house that burnt down. Right. So it gets a little stickier from here as well. Uh, in sworn testimony, Clinton's bodyguard, Barry Spivey, said he was with Governor Clinton when they flew over the house in an airplane. Clinton said, oh, you know what's down there? That's Judy Gibbs' house. Whips out a play, uh, I'm sorry, a penthouse magazine with her in it, points to the photos, and then points to the house on the ground below them and shows Barry Spivey. Hmm. Uh, this is what I've been doing. This is sworn testimony that this guy's given. Hmm. That old Bill <laughs> Slick Willie said, uh, you know, this um, probably, I'm assuming, was showing her off as a, you know, a showpiece there. I bagged that girl. <laughs> I banged her so good. <laughs> um, it gets, so right off the get-go, two, ten years apart, nine years apart, mm -hmm. two women that were said to have been sexually involved with Bill. And I do believe, for all intents and purposes, Hillary knows what Bill does with his dick. Yeah. I yeah. think she's very aware of what he's doing. It, I think it's. It, it seems as if they're trying to keep it under wraps as much as they possibly can. I don't think they're trying to keep it under... I think they're just trying to manage it at this point. Because right. everyone kind of knows. <clears throat> but the, it it just progressively gets weirder and weirder the further you go down the, the, uh, the rabbit hole in this one. Next up uh, is Danny Casalora. This is an August. This is August tenth of nineteen ninety one. Danny Casalora committed suicide. He was an investigative journalist who had been working to uncover the leads of several then rumored Clinton scandals, um, including activities at Mena Airport in Arkansas. Keep that um, that airport in your head. The the Mena Air okay. Airport in Arkansas. Casalora was found dead in his hotel bathroom with both wrists open 10 to 12 times, oh, God. though he had repeatedly informed his family and friends if he met such a fate, it would not be suicide. Oh, God. I think I have... 10 to 12 times? Yes. <sighs> he really wanted to cut them wrists open. Would you even be able to be coherent enough to do that? Um... I don't. I don't think so. Now it depends on. I, I've heard that when you slit your slit your wrist, it's supposed to be down. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. Like from the it's elbow down, vertically, not horizontally. Yeah, I. I really. Yeah. I don't want to slit my wrist. I don't either. That doesn't sound fun. <laughs> okay. Whew. So, Danny Castellor was part of this research project. Okay, he was starting to uncover a lot of different things about bill clinton and he was I, i'm gonna i'm gonna pause here for a second and make sure i don't have my my research okay switched up okay all right 
I was not I was not crazy about what I was <laughs> what I was thinking here. Okay. So he's doing all this investigative journalism, trying to he's he's starting to get a lot of things uncovered as far as dealings at this Mena Airport in Arkansas, which at the time Bill Clinton was the governor of Arkansas. And it's said that he was letting, he was allowing a lot of different drug deals to occur at Mina Airport, and he knew what was going on at Mina Airport, and he had no problem. He was covering for people at the time, and it was kind of like full go. Everything was allowed to happen at the airport. He was not, he didn't care, and he was doing a lot of bad things to cover up for bad people. Essentially, what it boils down to is he was in the pocket or people were in his pockets to the point where they were allowed to do whatever they wanted at the airport. And they knew the governor, Bill Clinton would cover for them for their, their drug dealings at this airport. It gets a little sketchier from here. There's two teenagers by the names of Kevin Ives and Don Henry. They were witnesses to some drug dealings that occurred at Mina airport. Okay. At the time, I think believe they were 15 or 16 years. They were 15 and 16 years old. They witnessed some drug deals happen at the Mina Airport while they were on a uh, deer hunting excursion. Some things that were not meant for the eyes of anybody. Oops. Well, turns out <clears throat> they, um, Kevin Ives and Don Henry, the two teenagers, were found dead on railroad tracks shortly after that. Hmm. Before they could give their, you know, their official testimony in court about what they what they'd seen. They were ran over by the uh, by the train. Okay, but the coroner uh, released his report and said, "Yeah, that's what happened. They got ran over." You know, in the story, there was some litigation and some lawsuits. Their bodies were exhumed and reexamined, and the second examination was done by another. Uh, Yes, another coroner or uh-huh. scientist of some type. He said, no, these guys had, I think one of them had a crushed skull, like several, it had been hit in the skull several times. And another one possibly had a, I believe, I could be wrong, a, a gunshot wound. And these guys were killed hmm. and put on the tracks before they ran over. So obviously that first corner was paid off. Well, he was a very close associate. He was the medical medical examiner for the state, I believe, okay. who was appointed by Bill Clinton. Bill Clinton immediately covered for the guy and said he was stressed and tired and that the mistakes he made with that those autopsies they should, they should be, you know, forgot forgiven. <laughs> okay. Two different autopsies and he completely botches, job security right there. Completely botches both of them. During the investigation, they said that these guys smoked 20 marijuanas between the two of them. <laughs> laid down the not not 20 marijuanas. <laughs> I shit you not, dude. Smoked 20 marijuanas, laid down on the tracks together, Jesus, and then got ran over by the train. Although they were dead, it was officially determined. Okay. They were dead before they were placed on the tracks. Okay. <laughs> that makes zero to no sense whatsoever. Exactly. Then you have another 19-year-old by the name of Keith, uh, uh, Keith Coney. He was a witness... And he was on a witness list that was subject to testify for the murders of Kevin Ives and Don Henry. He was set to testify, you know, to to right the wrongs that were made by whoever. Mm-hmm. He was chased on his motorcycle and ran over and killed. Um, Keith McCaskill, another witness that was going to testify in court, was officially going to testify, was stabbed 113 times. He was said to have been a witness uh, to their deaths before they were placed on the train tracks. Um, Another witness that was set to testify, Gregory Collins, was found with a shotgun blast to the face, which was said to have been a suicide. He was a witness to their deaths. Also, um, another this this gentleman, Richard Winters, was a suspect in the teen's death. He was all but, everyone was all but certain that he was the one that killed the two teens in the beginning mm-hmm. that were ran over by the train. He agreed to cooperate with the police and give his full testimony and go to court and tell everyone what had really happened. He died via a shotgun blast to the face 
during a botched robbery. <laughs> so have <laughs> one directly linked to that. Whew. Can, it's a lot in that one little story. It's a lot. Yes. Very <laughs> twisty. Yeah. Very turny. All kinds of weird stuff going on. It's like on a here. silly straw. Yes. Then also we have uh, James Dewey Millam. He was a witness to some of the drug dealings that were going on at the, the Mina Airport. He, I guess, was very um, very important figure at the airport and knew a lot of what was going on and who was involved. The... Uh, What's strange about his death is he was also suicided or murdered. I don't even know how you want to say it. Okay. But the medical, the medical examiner for his case was also the same guy, Fami Malek, that was appointed by Bill Clinton that did the medical exams on the teenagers. He said that James Dewey Milham died from an ulcer. Um, it was later discovered that his head was decapitated oh, gosh. and found several blocks away from the house. The medical examiner said that his dog chewed his head off after he passed away, even though the head was found several blocks away. Okay. And then another gentleman who was a witness in the, the alleged train death, Jeff Rhodes, his body was found burned to a crisp and stuffed in a trash can and partially mutilated with his fingers, toes, appendages removed. All people directly linked to God. Kevin Ives and Don Henry that um, observed some things happen at the airport via mm-hmm. drug, via, you know, whatever it was. It was mostly believed to have been drug deal, uh, cocaine uh, fueled drug transactions. Okay. Okay. And Clinton was said to be a huge hand. Bill Clinton was said to have been a huge hand in all of what was going on at Mina Airport. Hmm. That he was, you know, the, the one of the biggest players in making a lot of money from the deals. We're going to jump ahead a little bit to 1996. <sighs> These waters are getting deep. Yes. John Hillier, this is November of 1996, he was an NBC, NBC cameraman who had been working on an investigation of a drug smuggling operation in Mena, Arkansas, while Clinton was governor. So he's doubling back from this investigation from years prior that we were just speaking about. He also helped with a 30-minute video called Circle of Power and a now very popular documentary called The Clinton Chronicles. He realized the reach and the depth of the shit when he started talking to, uh, he started talking to people for his investigation. He was... Um, Accompanied by an associate named uh, Matris, um, Matriciana? I don't know how to pronounce that last name. Matriciana? Matriciana. That sounds good. <laughs> I'll take it. <laughs> they developed a friendship with Gary Parks. And now Gary was the son of Jerry Parks, who was a former security chief of Clinton's presidential campaign. Jerry Parks also was in charge of staffing all of Clinton's various uh, bodyguards and mm. executive protection. According to uh, Matriciana, Matriciana, <laughs> we're just going to call him Maddie. Okay? Maddie, <laughs> we're going to call him Maddie. <laughs> Jerry Parks had been hired several years earlier by Vince Foster on behalf of Hillary Clinton to put Bill Clinton under constant surveillance. Gary would go on surveillance stakeouts with his father as Jerry gathered photographic evidence of Clinton visiting with prostitutes, specifically Jennifer Flowers and other women. When, and we'll get to this later, when Vince Foster's body was found in Fort, uh, Fort Marcy Park, Jerry became very paranoid that he might also be targeted for murder. So Jerry was kind of, you know, he's a security guy that Bill thinks is... Um, been hired to appoint all of his executive protection when all actuality Jerry was hired by Hillary to keep a close fucking eye on Bill and see what all the fucked up shit he was doing. (laughs) Now, Jerry, he becomes very paranoid because people around him start to get whacked. Well, Jerry was right in feeling that way when Jerry was assassinated in his car in September of 1993, uh, which Jerry's son, Gary (laughs) and, and the widow, Jerry and Gary, why the fuck would you do that? Yeah believed it was undoubtedly related to his surveillance of Clinton. There was one point during the, um, I guess, when all of these journalists were in town trying to 
do this this story. So Gary Parks, the son, was, um, I guess, working alongside Hillier and Maddie. They, I guess, there was a specific s- spot in town where they set up a safe house, a spot where all these journalists could get together and discuss the facts that you know they were trying to document. Mm-hmm. There, um, one night, Gary Parks was asleep in the safe house when he was awakened to a, I guess, swift kick to the front door. So he, I guess, racked his, I think it was an M15. He had some kind of badass fucking gunner, an M something carbine. I don't M4? know. M4? Uh, yeah, an M4. Yeah. I think that was it. He had a badass gun, and he racked it. And he said when he did that, it scared the people at the front door away. So when he went to the window to look out and see who it was, he said he recognized one of the men as a Clinton security staffer. Hmm. Interviewers, uh, there was one point that at the safe house, they said, all right, guys, we want to start talking to the media about some things. We don't want to go anywhere. We want you to come here. So they had these different radio stations and other people come for interviews. And these people said, we want to check this safe house out for bugs. Before right. We, and the, they were like, that's fine. We don't have any bugs here. We you know. and we're not talking about like crabs or crotch crickets. We're talking <laughs> bed bugs. Yeah, bed bugs. <laughs> we're talking hidden microphones. Yes. So they, you know, shake the place down. Check it out. They. Oh, oh Rob Dog. Oh, Rob Dog. Jeez. Ooh. Sweetheart, you were absolutely incredible. You took me round and round five times. What's your secret? Oh, well, it's this little blue chewable pill that I just got called Blue Chew. Oh, Rob Dog, tell me, go, tell me more about this Blue Chew. Oh yeah, it's a little blue chewable pill that's prescribed online. Helps me make more stops here in the trailer park. It's chewable, so it's super handy. So you can take it any time you, you're ready to rock? Yeah. Oh my god, Rob Dog, I am gushing. That's right, Antoinette. Ever since I started using Blue Chew, everything is so much different. It's like I added an extra tank of gas. Is it, is it like that Viagra and Cialis stuff? Yes, it's the same active FDA ingredients. This stuff is... Bad to my bone. I mean, the bone. If you think that extra <laughs> is what you need, hit up bluechew.com just like the color blue. If you use the promo code BROHIO, that's B R O H I O at bluechew.com, you're going to get your first shipment free minus your $5 shipping. They're going to take care of that for you. Yeah, and email us a screenshot of your order, and the bros will send you some free stickers. Promo code BROHIO. At bluechew.com, you will thank us later. Check the place out, and they find eight bugs inside the house, and no one living there knew, had any fucking clue where they came from or who Man. put them there. <laughs> That's wild. Yeah. There was one point during their uh, journalistic travels that they intended to interview a hermit who observed the teens get murdered up in the mountains. The two uh, teens that were dragged to the railroad tracks. Yeah. He was a hermit up in the uh, mountains that they wanted to do an interview with. Well, two days before the interview, he mysteriously fucking drops dead and can't do the interview. (sighs) Hillier started to, um, and he's the the main journalist we're talking about here, started to fear for his own life, telling Maddie... Do what? I said naturally. (laughs) Yes, very naturally. (laughs) He um, started telling Maddie that he thought they would kill him by making it look like a heart attack. After the film was completed, Hillier went on to other projects and ended up living in Atlanta. In 1996, Maddie received a phone call from Hillier. Uh, Hillier told him he had uncovered new information that needed to be put on video, but they couldn't talk on an unsecured phone. <clears throat> they planned on meeting to discuss the new information, but... Hillier died of a heart attack three days later. Just dropped dead. Maybe he was stressing out from this shit. You know, I don't know. Maybe it wasn't. Maybe someone put fucking antifreeze in his coffee and never know. <laughs> Sometimes I wonder if people want to do that to me. You know? <laughs> That'll do it. I'll fucking eat anything. I'm fucking sitting here bashing on a cupcake. I mean, it's fine. For dude. all I know, who knows? Your wife may be poisoned to me. And yeah, I wouldn't. The way she's upset with me today, <laughs> I would not eat those cupcakes. Hey, suck it. I'll take it. 
The next we have uh, C. Victor Razor the second. What a cool name! Mm-hmm. Sounds like a professional wrestler. <laughs> and Montgomery Razor. This happened in July of 1992. Um, Victor Razor the second was the finance co-chairman of Bill Clinton's presidential campaign. He was killed in a plane crash along with his son uh, Montgomery Razor and three other passengers. Another passenger and the pilot were injured. Now, uh, Clinton campaign press secretary D.D. Myers described Victor Razor II as a major player in the Clinton organization, according to the New York Times. He was the national finance co-chairman of Clinton's presidential campaign. Uh, God, that's that's just spells fucking dirty (laughs) and had been a friend of the Clintons for about a decade. He was also previously the national finance chairman of the democratic national committee. He served on the boards of the democratic business council and the center for national policy and the board of advisors of the democratic leadership council. That all sounds really stupid to me. Just all up in the democratic party. Pretty yes. What's concerning here is that he (laughs) <laughs> was essentially fucking blown out of the sky in an airplane after there were some very testy dealings back and forth with the Clintons. They were they Robert Kennedy them. They did, and they weren't really. Sh- there was kind of some heated debates going back and forth about some certain policy, and I'm I would assume that it had a lot to do <clears throat> with money. Okay, mm-hmm. there's a lot of back and forth about that, and this guy goes for a fucking you know I'm just gonna go for just gonna go for a fly plane ride. Yep. No, dead. <sighs> Alrighty. Now, next on our list is uh, Kathy Ferguson. Wait a second. Yes, this is my favorite one. Okay. This is May 10th of 1994. Kathy Ferguson. Okay. <laughs> okay. Oh, God. This has the Nicolicious stamp of approval right here. All right. <laughs> you got to get into character. So, there's a lady by the name of Paula Jones. She filed a lawsuit against the Clinton, against Bill Clinton. Mm-hmm. According to Paula Jones' account, on May 8th of 1991, she was escorted to the Clinton's room at the Excelsior. It's a, it's a hotel, hotel in yeah. Little Rock. It's now called the Marriott. <clears throat> and she was escorted to the room by state troopers. Once she was escorted through the room, she was put in a room with Bill Clinton where he propositioned her, he exposed himself to her. Look at this. They want to see my dick. I would <laughs> really like for you to take a look at my dick. Come in here and take a look at my wiener. So she gets stuffed in this room with him, okay? Okay. Um, but she's kind of... For lack of a better word, dragged, kicking and screaming by these... Arkansas state troopers. She's dragged to this room by them. She, they escort her to the room. Yeah. Okay. Kathy Ferguson, her ex husband, not in, they hadn't been, you know, this whole entire lawsuit. There was Paula Jones filed a lawsuit over being stuffed in the room with Bill Clinton, okay. being sexually assaulted. Gotcha. Now, Kathy Ferguson, her husband, was one of the state troopers that dragged that escorted Paula her Jones? to the room. Okay. So she was married to him at the time and knew a lot of the details of the case. Uh-huh. A lot of the details of the case. Well, she's reported to have died from a suicide in which she shot herself in the head. Although her bags were packed next to her body, possibly indicating that she planned to leave her home. And like I said, Ferguson was the ex-wife of Arkansas Trooper Danny Ferguson, who had been a co-defendant along with Clinton in the Paula Jones lawsuit. Hmm. Flash forward, a month later, Kathy Ferguson's dead. She's in the ground, okay? She had a fiancé that she'd moved on to after she separated from um, Danny Ferguson, the state trooper. Flash forward one month later, he goes to her grave, her fiancé, and kills himself on top of her grave. Damn, just suicided. Yeah, and let's and let's be totally realistic here. If you're gonna suicide yourself, you're not <laughs> gonna pack fucking bags. No, there's no not. reason. What fucking what you know sense does it have? It doesn't make to pack bags. You ain't gonna fucking eat them where you're going. No, you're not. You're fucking pushing it. up daisies. You don't need to pack an uh, extra pair of underwear. <laughs> I I just like 
I think all these deaths. You might shit your pants, but I mean, you're not thinking about that. <laughs> <laughs> I shit your pants. There's always that possibility with me. I hope I go out shitting my pants. Now I think about the people that are pulling off all these killings, allegedly pulling off these killings. Right. What kind of people are they? Are they like former, you know, Navy SEALs, or are they like in the movies? Are they kids that are that go to a killing camp when they're little, and they raise these kids in these killing camps, and they're killers for the Clintons? Hmm. Did you ever go to camp when you were a kid? Mm, camp Kern whenever we were in like fifth grade, but that was really I went it. to Camp Kern. <laughs> I don't really count that as going to camp, though. But then when I was like, uh, I don't know, like fifth or sixth grade. So this is kind of how it works for everybody. You're kind of, I was pretty chubby until I hit puberty. Okay? I was, <laughs> you didn't go to fat camp, did I you? Was, <laughs> there's a little bit of a story behind this, if you want to hear it. <laughs> yeah, I love stories. I was a bit of a, I was a, bit of a, of a dumpling, okay? <laughs> Lack of a better word. So uh, I'm going to church, right? And they're like, church camp. Who wants to fucking go? They said, just like, who wants to fucking go to church camp? And I said, I want to go. I want to go to church camp. Mom and dad, send me. So one of the, I guess the things for this church camp is they would ask the parents. They would say, what does your kid need to work on? Is he playing too many video games? Is he talking back? Is he got an attitude? Is he, um, what is he not? Getting in bed with the Lord every night with the word. What's going on with him? My parents are like, he's a good kid. There's nothing really wrong with him. We don't really know. You know, <laughs> There's nothing he needs to work on. They're like, all right, he'll have fun at church camp. He's only partially retarded. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so we all pile in the van to go to church camp. All the kids from my church. You know, there's you know, kids my age, kids older. Yeah. Skinny kids, fat kids, ugly kids. Every kid. Pretty kids. Yeah, all, all types. So then we get to the fucking church camp, and they're like, all right, you're going to Camp Sector 5. You're going to Camp Sector 3. Nick, you're going to Camp Sector 2. And I'm like, all right, guys, I'll see, you know, like, you'll see your friends during activities. And I'm like, all right, that's fine. <laughs> see you guys later. So then I get to the bunks where I'm at, and I notice everyone's fucking chubby. <laughs> I'm not like, and I want to, when I say you're, I was fat, you're, you're a big Bertha and chunky Charlie over there. <laughs> well, dude, I wasn't that fat. I was a little bit chubby. I was like super fat. You know? They totally fucked with your self-esteem. <laughs> and I'm looking around and, uh, you know, you can see some of the bunks from the other campsites. They're out like passing footballs and running around. And everyone on my site's just like <laughs> sitting on the porch with their foot. You know, what time's dinner? What time we got to eat? And I, I didn't really think anything of it because there were those kids, you know, my size and a little bit smaller. Yeah. And I wasn't a fucking fat kid. Right, yeah. Just a yeah. little bit pudgy, okay? Not even, I thinned out when I hit puberty. Yeah. So then, like, we're going to go to, you know, praise and worship tonight. You guys are going to have so much fun. And we go to this chapel type deal, and it's only the people from my site. <laughs> and we're all sitting down the views, like just waiting for this. There's like background music playing and stuff, and then the fucking beat just drops. Like, <laughs> and this fucking guy runs out on stage, you know, like a Leah. He looks like Ben Stiller from Heavyweights. Does he, does he have one of the headset microphones on? Dude, he did. Dude. <laughs> yes, he did. Oh god! And he's like fucking Tony Robbins, he's like jumping back and forth. He's doing like the tiger. He's just jumping back and forth. He's like, Are you tired of being fat? <laughs> no, it gets so much better. And he's like jogging in place, and everyone's like, like looking just at each other, along just with like, the music. what the fuck is going on right now? And it's like, poof, 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 poof. and he's like, all right, guys, and he snap. He's like, broccoli, salad, carrots. Listen to your parents, and he's like dancing, and then he's like, cucumbers. Healthy snacks. And then when he says healthy snacks, the fucking place, the beat dropped so hard, dude. It went from there's all this crazy music. And when he says healthy snacks, fucking 20 of the chubbiest kids in the entire world come running from the side of the stage on the stage, like middle. And they're dancing. They're like, but they're like choking and they're hot. 
<laughs> there's like 20 fat kids up on the stage or like, their necks are all shaking around and there's chocolate pudding dried on their collars their shirts there's, there's one fucking kid re- <laughs> one kid reaching his pocket to grab out to grab out a hot pocket there's, there's like dunkaroos and fucking <laughs> dunkaroos and fruit roll-ups falling out of their pockets and they're dancing up on the stage none of their dance moves are, are you know they're they're not in sync at all oh and my god broccoli <laughs> carrots listen to your parents and I'm like man where the fuck am I at I am legitimately at fat camp and that's when it clicked <laughs> then they put me in fucking fat camp <laughs> and I'm like we get out of there and I go to my counselor and I said you can send me to a different spot of this campground or I'm gonna call the police and I'm gonna get out of here <laughs> so then they sent me in like you know uh <laughs> kids that need to listen to their parents more or something like that and i got back to the church and i found out that my parents they never they never turned on me they said there's nothing wrong with him so then the youth pastor's like mm, we're gonna we're gonna put him with the chubby kids because <laughs> there was it was you know specific the church didn't know that that's what kind of church camp it was gonna be they just knew they were getting a really good rate on church camp but it was oh like oh my god there was all these poor kids that were getting sent to like, you know, all these different spots of the camp where they're going to learn different things. And since my parents said, well, there's nothing wrong with him. He's fine. He's a good kid. I got sent to the fat portion of the camp. <laughs> I had to watch the tiger up there. <laughs> but I will never leave my mind. The kids when the beat dropped <laughs> healthy snacks. <laughs> All the fat kids that came running out on the stage like roly polies. <laughs> yeah. The one kid legitimately had a char looked like he took a chocolate bar and scrubbed the middle of his chest with it. Like a fucking Hershey's bar. Like melted it and just started rubbing it. Rub a dub dub. Fat kid chocolate in the tub. Oh man, it's so good. And then I said, I really need to get some hair in my penis. Because I knew as soon as I hit puberty, I would start to thin out. Because yeah. it was That's, it happens. <laughs> it happens. Carrots. <laughs> <laughs> Listen to your parents. That was a horrible experience, Rob Dog. It sounds like it <laughs> sounds fucking traumatizing. I was fucked up because of that. <laughs> you blamed your whole life on and that one event. I got sent to the other side of the camp. I found some kid that liked to smoke a lot, but he had a guitar, and I played. Oh, okay, yeah, it, I, yeah. I dabbled in the guitars. So. It weighs out. <clears throat> I smoked a cigarette with him, too. <laughs> Fucking haven't even told my mom and dad that. I'm almost 33, and I've never smoked a cigarette. Really? Never smoked a cigarette. Yeah, they're nasty. Yeah, I bet they are. Yeah. They're not worth a shit. No, yeah, fuck them. Parrots. <laughs> Carrots. Listen to your parents. <laughs> oh, God. I just wasted an hour right there. I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so this next one is... Um, what are we even talking about? What's the subject tonight? Vince Vince Foster. This uh, He died July 20th, 1993. Vince Foster was the deputy White House counsel, and some people say... This is the most suspect of all the murders, okay? When we talk about the the Clinton body count, this is the one most closely associated, besides your most recent one that yeah. we'll talk about here in just a little bit. We'll get to it. This is Vince Foster, uh, July 20th of 1993. Vince Foster was Deputy White House Counsel and Hillary's friend and law partner who had connections to the Travelgate and Whitewater scandals. Now, the Whitewater scandal was a... Um, real estate mess that bill and hillary were caught up in they were there was a lot of illegal real estate dealings that were going on where there was a, some vacation properties that were being built and B- bill and hillary invested in this well the guy that was running it was one of the biggest fucking money criminals in the entire world when it came time for the court proceedings the court said Bill and Hillary, we need your court. We need your documentations of everything, of all the investing. And Bill and Hillary said, mm, we don't have any of that. We, and for someone of that, you know, level of, I guess, for what they were doing and who they were, there should have definitely been political or some kind of financial records. Yeah, of you would think of their investments and what they were doing. They said, no, we don't have that. Well, flash forward a month or so, and it, so it does pop up that they actually did have it in the beginning, after they manufactured it, when they were, you know, they, they were asked to produce it, and they couldn't produce it, so it gave them time to actually manufacture the documents. <laughs> Conveniently. See how that works. <clears throat> yeah. So he was a big player in the Travelgate and Whitewater scandals, and that was the Whitewater scandal, was all that 
real estate bullshit. And in 1993, Foster was found dead in a park <laughs> with a fatal gunshot wound to his mouth. Uh, his suicide was a subject of much speculation and three official investigations. Investigations by the U.S. Park Police, the Department of Justice, the FBI, uh, Congress, Damn. Independent Counsel Robert B. Fisk, and um, Independent Counsel Kenneth Starr concluded Foster's death was indeed a suicide. However, in 2003, one of Starr's key investigators challenged the official line, insisting the probe's result was predetermined only a few plotters were required to engineer the result the crime scene was altered and that major newspaper editors killed stories by reporters pursuing the truth the washington post reported that the federal investigators were not allowed to enter foster's office after his death but white house aides entered foster's office shortly after his death giving rise to speculation that files were removed from his office. Yeah, that definitely sounds like that's the case. And they were, Bill and Hillary were going to be, there was going to be criminal charges brought against them for the the real estate scam that was known as uh, Whitewater, whatever, uh, yeah, the Whitewater scandal. In 2005, uh, the it's a book titled The Truth About Hillary, What She Knew, When She Knew It, and How Far She'll Go to Become President. Edward Klein wrote Hillary's involvement in the effort to remove Foster's files. The night of Foster's death, Hillary launched one of the most shameful and illegal cover-ups of her entire career. Now, this is the opinion of the writer. Um, She sent two of her most trusted White House loyalists, Maggie Williams, the First Lady's Chief of Staff, Hmm. and Patsy Thomason, who was in charge of White House administration, into Foster's office to retrieve embarrassing and incriminating documents related to the Whitewater scandal and Hillary's other personal affairs. While White House counsel Bernard uh, Nussbaum... (laughs) Okay. (laughs) Nussbaum. What an unfortunate name. Carrots. Listen to your parents. Barred investigators from entering Foster's (laughs) office, Maggie Williams, Patty Thomason, and Craig Livingston, Hillary's director of White House security, removed all armloads of files and loose leaf binders. In addition, a White House staffer allegedly tampered with the title of several memos and removed the First Lady's initials in an effort to erase her role in improper behavior. Very, very fishy. (laughs) Very fishy. Think so? Very fishy. And that's why some people say this is the most damning death of all of them. She was his <laughs> law partner. She did a lot of Whew. shitty dealings with him. Something smells like fish and it's not my pussy. <laughs> it might be. I mean, it might be, but it might be your pussy. <laughs> I need to take care of Some of those kids from fat camp. Is what it is. <laughs> so she sends her most trusted staff <laughs> to essentially empty his office, even though the law enforcement wasn't allowed to empty his office. Uh, about the same time she was about to get nailed to the fucking wall over these criminal dealings. Come here, puss. <sighs> Rob's hollering for a kitty. Is that the gray one or the white one? Fuck yeah, it's the mean one. No, oh, yeah, she's not. She's not gonna get up. <laughs> Fuck you, dude. Little asshole. All right, we're coming to the. We're coming close to the end here. Not really, but oh Jesus <clears throat> Christ, kind of so. Uh, John Parnell Walker. He was killed August fifteenth of nineteen ninety three. John Walker fell to his death from the top of the Lincoln Towers building in Arlington, Virginia. On July 10th of 1994, Connecticut's The Day newspaper reported in March of 92, Walker, an investigator for the Resolution Trust Corporation, had contacted the Kansas City RTC regional office for information concerning possible ties (coughs) between Whitewater development and a a certain savings and, and, and loan bank. And he also wanted to know the the connection between those entities and the Clintons. So soon after he inquired all these records, he's pushed out of a fucking building <laughs> to his death. <laughs> Splat. Oh, watch your step. Yep. You see a slide whistle. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now this is another good one. This is another juicy one. Uh November of ninety three, Ed Wiley. Ed Wiley was a Clinton fundraiser who was found dead 
deep in the woods of Virginia of a gunshot wound to the head. The death was ruled a suicide. Meanwhile, that exact same day, his wife, Kathleen Wiley, claimed Bill Clinton groped her in the Oval Office in the White House. (laughs) And just so happens, he gets whacked that exact same day. Fucking Bill, man. James Bunch, uh, this is February of 94, he's a... Another juicy one, James, he was a 46-year-old uh, Texas State employee in Austin who ran a prostitution ring from his office, reportedly died from a suicide involving a gun. Bunch was said to have owned a little black book, quote, of influential people, including at least one state legislator from Texas and Arkansas who visited prostitutes. Bunch's files contained descriptions of high-profile clients they are sexual preferences. Hmm. Do it in the butt. There's <laughs> the amount of money they are willing to spend, whether they were good or bad clients who might hurt. Jesus Christ. The escorts. Ooh. According to a report in the Telegraph, there was a possibility that juveniles were involved in his business. <laughs> Police told yeah. the Associated Press Bunch was arrested and interrogated, but hadn't appeared distraught or suicidal. <clears throat> Ooh we gotta stay away from them miners. Gotta stay away from them Bill Clintons. <laughs> that too. All right, now we uh, Ron Brown. Ron Brown. He was Secretary of Commerce and a former DNC chairman. He reported to have died by impact in a plane crash. A pathologist close to the investigation reported that there was a fucking hole in the top of Brown's skull resembling a gunshot wound. Hmm. At the time of his death, Brown was being investigated and spoke publicly of his willingness to cut a deal with prosecutors. Personal attorney, okay, he had some dealings. His son was going to be going to um, jail for something, this Ron Brown guy. So to help, uh, I guess, get his son... uh, to the point where he wouldn't do time. He said, hey, I have some information about some underhanded deals between the Clintons and China. So right as he's about to start coming forward with these, uh, <clears throat> all the information he had about this, he too dies in a plane crash. But the pathologist says, no, he didn't die in the plane crash. This guy had his fucking head smoked off before the plane crash, which is really cool, right? <laughs> right. <clears throat> um, the day after he died, his personal attorney was killed in a drive-by shooting. Jeez. The air traffic controller in charge that day. <laughs> oh, my God. This is like hitting every <laughs> fucking rung on the ladder. Ah, no, dude. It's so oh, fucking bad. The air traffic controller in charge that day committed suicide three days after the crash. <laughs> One of Ron Brown's closest associates, a Muslim man by the name of Mohammed Ferret. Okay. Uh, you're real cool to have one of those pit in my butt. <laughs> Goddamn gerbils keep <laughs> slipping out. I'm sure his fucking mailman set himself on fire, too, after yeah, that. Probably so. <laughs> hey, next time you're at work and you rip a big nasty fart, tell your coworkers that, oh, that's going to smell like burnt gerbil here. It really <laughs> gets a rise out of people. Try that. Um, but yeah, this close <laughs> Muslim associate was supposed to be on the plane that day, yeah. but at the last second, he skipped out on the plane. Four months later, he died in a plane crash as well. <laughs> so it said he knew some information that uh, he wasn't supposed to to know. This is a very uh, <clears throat> this is a very famous one as well. This is Mary Mahoney. She was a former White House intern up until 1995 when she was fucking suicided by the Clintons. She then became... (laughs) (laughs) Sorry. I wasn't ready for that. She was an intern at the White House until 1995. She then became a night manager of a Starbucks... Get it, girl. ...and became friends with White House intern Monika Lewinsky. You may have heard of her. Fucking Bill's side piece. She got some cum on her dress. Who... Uh, Suck a mean dick. Yeah, she could. (laughs) She, uh, Monica, frequented the Starbucks. Mahoney, she was killed at the coffee store during a shooting that was described as a robbery, though nothing was taken. Hmm, that's not how robberies work. That's not a robbery, my friend. (laughs) Exactly, that's a murder. Mahoney's co-workers, Emery, Allen Evans, and Aaron David Goodrich, a man named, uh, they were, I'm sorry, they were also working that night. They were murdered as well. 
a man named Carl Derek Haver Cooper. That sounds. How like many f- fucking names do you need? That sounds like a fucking murder right there. Yeah. Was arrested and charged with their murders in March of '99. Cooper pleaded guilty and said he went to Starbucks to rob the store after it was closed. <laughs> he said he ordered Mahoney, Evans, and Goodrich to the back of the store, but he claimed Mahoney attempted to grab his gun. Oh, Cooper, of course. Cooper said that's when he shot her and the other two employees and then made his escape, fearing the gunfire would alert authorities. Goodrich made the confession after a 54-hour interrogation. Okay. He later recanted what he said, Mm -hmm. but was ultimately found guilty. Let's talk about for a second false confessions. (laughs) 54 hours. 54 hours. 54 hours in, you're going to say whatever the fuck you think they want to hear to get away. (laughs) It's like the old woman, Happy Gilmore. Yeah. Get me out of here. Yeah. That's exactly what it is, man. 54 hours. That's crazy. That's. What, two and a half days? So he... Ugh. All right. So he said he reactively shot her when she tried to grab the gun. Mahoney was shot five times, hmm. once in the back of the head with the, with the key to the safe in her hand. The safe, which held $10,000, was not touched. Despite the Starbucks location in a densely populated neighborhood, no one reported hearing gunfire hmm. sparking speculation that the gunman obviously used a fucking silencer hmm. <clears throat> the murders took place during pre-trial media coverage of the paula jones lawsuit against bill clinton for sexual harassment the one we spoke about earlier yeah where she was escorted by the state troopers during his trial the washington post reported cooper told fbi agents quote I swear on my father's grave and my son's life that I did not do Starbucks. Um, so there was a gentleman by the name of Eric Butera. He was a witness that was going to be called to the stand in all of this. He was also a confidential informant for the government that was working undercover. Well, he was a fucking drug dealer, a drug addict recovering drug addict that was being used for for drug buys Mm -hmm. undercover but he was also going to be a witness to the starbucks shootings lo and behold he gets sent into a fucking crack house undercover for an undercover buy and is stomped and beat to death while inside the crack house oh that does not sound fun at all another witness gone Oof. a lot of loose ends getting tied up here (laughs) You, you fucking think so? <laughs> then you have uh, old Jim McDougal, age 57. He was a key witness against the Clintons in the Whitewater scandals. He miraculously had a fucking heart attack, hmm. but he was also said to be suffering from serious health problems. Okay. He was in solitary confinement. He was also on 12 different medications. <laughs> uh, unusual Prozac level found during his autopsy. Questions about whether, um, I guess, the drugs given, including Lasix, which is contradicted for heart patients, that all of this this cocktail together was said to have killed him. But ultimately, this his death forced uh, a case, the 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 White Water scandal, the case to be dropped because he was one of the key witnesses that was going to allegedly uh, give testimony against the Clintons. Hmm. He just miraculously dies from a bunch of fucking drugs in solitary confinement. All right. Seems like a... And you're... There's... <clears throat> you think you're in prison. You're not safe from the Clintons in prison. And that's where we're learning present day as well, isn't it, Rob Dog? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> just when I thought going to prison sounded sounded reasonable. Yeah, it's fun. Nope. Um, Johnny Lawhorn Jr. <laughs> Johnny Lawhorn Jr. <laughs> You say to yourself, what the fuck does this guy do for a living? Well, he's a fucking mechanic. He works on fucking yeah, cars. I can see that. Goddamn tornado blew through there while he was down there at the junkyard he worked out. <laughs> blew a bunch of fucking cars open. One of the cars, one of the trunks had a goddamn briefcase in it, okay? Okay. This is all a true story. I'm not making, just because I'm using a stupid fucking retarded <laughs> voice doesn't mean I'm making it up. In the back of the, the vehicle... So he's looking at through all these cars after the, the tornado tears all these cars up. He finds a check for, I think it was around $30,000 written by Bill Clinton 
and it was made out. Um, I'm sorry. It was a large check from Madison Guarantee Savings and Loan, which was made out to Bill Clinton for around thirty thousand dollars. That name doesn't sound familiar, but they were the other half of the Whitewater scandal mm. real estate stuff. So he had direct evidence in his hands of these payments that were allegedly not occurring, that were occurring, that weren't supposed to be occurring. He's got the check in his hand. Well, flash forward a couple, I think it was a couple weeks, um, less than a quarter of a mile from his work, he was forced off the roadway and died in a collision with a telephone pole or a tree. Ugh. Yeah. This was after he found that, right after he found that check. Hmm. Isn't that fun? No. <laughs> <laughs> this one's kind of a, <clears throat> it's kind of a long one, but it, it doesn't need to really be long. He was a, this is a man by the name of Charles Wilborn Miller. This is in 1999. He was kind of in charge of a big brother system that the White House was, was building. It was a, a big brother computer system where they could monitor a lot of different things. A medical examiner said that he had committed suicide. Um, he went into a shallow pit about 300 yards from his ranch in Little Rock, Arkansas, and used a 410 gauge shotgun and also had a 357 caliber Ruger revolver that was submerged in water. <clears throat> uh, investigators concluded the, the Ruger was the weapon used by Miller to kill himself, yet... Two rounds in the handgun cylinder had been spent like he had potentially either shot himself twice or shot the gun on his way. Or just missed the first time he tried. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how to do this. Oh, God. Um, he long served as executive vice president and member of the board of directors for Altel and was deeply involved in his own software engineering company <laughs> until the day he died. Altel, no wonder why he killed himself. Jesus Christ. <clears throat> and he was a big part of this t project that Clinton backed where they could track everything. I mean, they can do that now. Yeah. But, uh, <clears throat> most of the 99. So, I mean, yeah, that was a while back. Jesus. Uh, Charles Ruff. He was the lawyer who defended Clinton during his Monica Lewinsky scandal and impeachment reportedly died after an accident at his Washington home. Uh, one report said he was found unconscious outside of a shower. Other reports indicated he had a heart attack, but hmm. nonetheless... That's a suspicious one, because, I mean... You tell your attorney everything. Yeah. Well, I guess that's true. I was going to say, but at the same time, he got him off. He not, did get, not like that, but... <laughs> no, he got him off, but he knew everything. I guess that's true. Bill probably said... Loose hey, ends, you know, once again. I did do this shit, so here's how we're going to get ourselves out of it. <laughs> And he needed this attorney to know all the facts so he could, you know, build this case to, to get him off the hook. And he, uh, <laughs> he got fucking whacked, too. Potentially. This is a fun one. Gareth Williams. Now, he was a transatlantic M6 to M MI6. I think it's MI6. This is, we're jumping 10 years into the future. This is 2010. Yeah, this is 2010. He was a... Very, fairly recent. He was a spy whose dead body was found naked. <clears throat> Yummy padlocked oh, and stuffed in a 32 inch by 19 inch duffel bag that was mm. sitting in his London bathtub. Who's my pretty little casserole? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you get in there. You don't come out no more ever again. You get in there and you suck your own dick because you know that feels good when you suck on your own peaches. 32 by 19. Whew. Yes. That's not a big square. <laughs> That's not big at They're all. They're not getting me in that motherfucker. <laughs> I know, right? He had illegal, and it said that he illegally hacked secret data on the on Bill Clinton, according to the UK Sun, the news site noted his death is still one of Britain's most mysterious unsolved cases. Um, the Scotland Yard had announced the death as a suicide, saying he locked himself in the bag, but his DNA was found <laughs> on the lock. I'm sorry, his DNA was not found on the lock, and there were no palm prints on the edge of the bathtub. So this guy. How do you? How would you lock yourself in a in anything when the lock is on the outside to begin with? I don't fucking. If know. the lock is on the inside, you can so fucking bad. easily open it up. We're gonna fucking die, dude. 
I'm glad all this research was done on your IP address. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking die. <laughs> oh, coming towards the end of our list here. This is John Ashey, and he died in June of 2016. <sighs> he was a former United Nations General Assembly president. He was found dead in his New York home after official cause was uh, a heart attack, but he had he his like seal. throat crushed by weights. Oh, God. Yeah, so he might not have had a heart attack. He might have been murdered. Um, Maybe he was benching without a spotter. Yeah. Uh, it, Ashy was scheduled to testify in just days with Chinese businessman and co-defendant N.G. Lap Singh, who was accused of smuggling $4.5 million into the U.S. and lying that it was to buy casino chips. <clears throat> um. The New York Post said NG, the, the China man, was identified in a 1998 Senate document as the source of hundreds of thousands of dollars illegally funneled through an Arkansas restaurant owner, Charlie Tri, to the Democratic National Committee during the Clinton administration. <laughs> One source told me, Johnson wrote, during the trial, the prosecutors would have linked Ashy to the Clinton bagman, NG, and would have been very embarrassing. His death was conveniently timed. Also, here more recently, uh, Mike Flynn, he was an investigative reporter. He died the same day he released articles about the Clinton Foundation and their, uh, I guess, like direct correlation with some money coming from China in 2014. So the same day he releases this article. Fuck. Man, we could die tomorrow. We could die tomorrow. Now, the second to, to biggest one, Seth Rich. Now, he was the DNC Voter Expansion Data Director. He died July 10th of 2016. He was shot several times in the back, a block, and I'm sure a lot of you have heard this in the media. Um, he was shot several times in the back from his home in, uh, a, in Washington, D.C., neighborhood of Bloomingdale. The police declared it a robbery gone bad, but nothing had been taken. Seth still had his wallet, watch, and cell phone. One possible motive for his assassination lies with the WikiLeaks oh, dump of yeah. 20,000 DNC emails, which proved the DNC was rigging which yeah. un- against Bernie Sanders. Yes, yeah. to favor Hillary Clinton. They yeah. didn't like the big burn. They didn't want him giving, giving away everything. The aliens, man. The scandal forced DNC chair Debbie Wasserman Schultz to resign, although Hillary's people tried to portray this as a hack by Russia to cast Hillary as a victim of international intrigue. WikiLeaks, while not identifying the leak, denied it was Russia and stated it was an internal leak. Hmm. If Seth, who was in perfect position to acquire the data, were the leak, that would be ample motive to murder him as a warning to others inside the DNC not to blow any fucking whistles. Shortly after the killing, Redditors and social media users were pursuing a lead saying that Rich was en route to the FBI the morning of his murder. And it was at like 4.30 in the morning when this happened, so it's not like this was coming home from the bar. This was potentially going somewhere in the morning. Mm-hmm. Um apparently intending to speak to special agents about an ongoing court case possibly invol- involving the Clinton family. Reports are that uh, he was set to testify before the Congressional Committee looking into Hillary's email server, which we all know so much <laughs> That's about. That's its own fucking thing, yeah. According to Rich's girlfriend, Seth Rich had uncovered evidence of massive fraudul- uh, fraudulating I'm sorry, this is not a real fucking word. (laughs) Frauding. Frauding. Richard uncovered evidence of massive frauding primaries involving a voter app he himself had written. So that murder was kind of portrayed in the media as a botched robbery, which Uh. it really fucking wasn't. He was shot and... He was murdered in cold blood. As we've we've seen, yeah, with, with most of these quote-unquote robberies where nothing was taken. <laughs> right. That's, you, you know, you rob someone to take something from them, and if you're not taking something from them, it's just a murder. <laughs> just a fucking murder. It's not a fucking robbery. It's a fucking hit job right it's, there. Yeah, buddy. it's a hit job. Now, uh, our last one here, the death of Jeffrey Epstein, or Epstein. Epstein. Whatever yeah. you want to call it. This is taken from Wikipedia, so don't fucking fuck you, blow me. <laughs> 
Epstein was found dead in his cell in Metropolitan Correctional Center in New York City at 6.30 a.m. on August 10th, 2019. And this is two days ago as, as of right now, so this is very <laughs> yes. fresh. He was 66 years old. The Bureau of Prisons and U.S. Attorney General William Barr called the death an apparent suicide or suicided it. Although no final determination has been made, Epstein's cause of death is being investigated by the Justice Department. An autopsy was performed August 11th, yesterday, <clears throat> but no cause of death has been announced because the New York City Medical Examiner's Office is awaiting further information. He, I mean, what is what there further f- fucking information yeah. would you need? On July 23rd, three weeks prior, Epstein was found unconscious in his jail cell with injuries to his neck. After that accident, he was placed on suicide watch. Six days later, Epstein was taken off of suicide watch and placed in a special housing unit with other inmates. The jail had informed the Justice Department that Epstein would have a cellmate and that a guard would look into the cell every 30 minutes. These procedures were not followed on the night of his death. Two weeks after his suicide, um, two weeks after his suicide watch, the jail allowed him to be housed alone in violation of the jail's normal procedure. Epstein was not being checked every 30 minutes on the night he died. And that comes okay. with citations there. Okay. Now, there's a big thing going around the media right now that the uh, cameras surrounding his cell all completely malfunctioned the exact time that he killed himself. Or yeah. there's no surveillance footage whatsoever. Okay. So everyone's like, why is there not anything? There's usually not a camera in the cell. You don't yeah, you don't have cameras in cells. You have cameras in the common areas and um usually they are going to uh, it, it it depends on I guess it depends on the housing units. If if we're talking about you know where he was at in the first place which was the suicidal watch cell, I know from my experience there is the cells and there's cameras that are pointing towards them. Those are like an exception. Yes. But when you're in general housing, you're not going to have, you're going to have like maybe say, say if it's what, what we call a pod. So if it's like two people in a room and there's like a hundred rooms, so potentially 200 people, there's no way you're going to be able to have 200 cameras. You're going to no. have general cameras in the common area that are pointing towards, you know, your CEO's desk towards your um, phone area towards the rack it, the the general population areas you're not going to be able to see inside the cells. But you're going to be able to see someone running up in somebody's cell. But you will definitely be able to see that. Yeah, yeah. You you'll be able to see movement because if the CEO, which which I I worked midnights whenever I worked, so that there's going to be a camera on that CEO desk. Yes. So you're going to see if they're at their or if they're what they're doing, or there's going to be you know if they're not. And I'll go with you know the the thirty minute. I think we had to do our. Hour, ch- hour walkthroughs. I think ours was every 30 minutes. Staggered it, staggered intervals of every 30 but minutes. But we, not that I remember, we didn't have to log those. Well, we did. S- we had, like, time you, stamps. You worked in a prison. Yeah. So it, jail and prison might be a little bit different. Right. We, yeah, we could easily fudge those. <laughs> right. But not if they go back and check the cameras. Yes, yes. But if the cameras, you know, showed that, then, yeah, you, you're, you're right. good. But Exactly. So, yeah, so just kind of weighing that out there, right? Now the death of this, he was a uh, he was a wealthy. I didn't even know what the fuck he was. He was a wealthy hedge fund investor. Came just one day after the courts unsealed hundreds of damaging allegations. The more than two thousand pages of documents showed alleged claims of sexual abuse against Epstein's notable and high up associates. There was all kinds of princes and kings and people from all over the fucking place. A lot of high profile people. Yes. He had been linked to many high power connections, including President Donald J. Trump, Bill and Hillary Clinton, Prince Andrews, Bill Richardson, and George Mitchell. The unsealed documents shed light on allegations that impl- that could implicate numerous prominent American politicians, powerful business executives, foreign presidents, a well-known prime minister, and other world leaders. A, quote, former president was named anonymous- anonymously in the documents. So hmm. let's think of how many former presidents we have that are still alive. We have a what? 
I tell you, it wasn't. It was, it was not. It was not George Bush. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't George Bush. <laughs> There's not that many of them. And it was. Uh, it could have been who's the old fucking Jimmy Carter. Jimmy Carter. That old. He's been around since fucking 1833. <laughs> no, I think he's older than that, dude. <laughs> the fucking peanut president. Yeah. Yeah. He's 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 not going. He's like Betty White. <laughs> peanut president. That's what he was called. He worked on a peanut farm, or he owned a so peanut stupid. farm, something like that. Fucking uh, all-American right there. Some of the names include powerful Democrats, former Senate Majority George Mitchell, and former New Mexico Governor Bill Richardson, a member of President Bill Clinton's cabinet, notable Prince Andrews, name was, was also included. Okay. Clinton and Epstein first met when the former president was still in the White House. Bill Clinton seemed to enjoy spending time with him and racked up at least... 26 trips aboard Epstein's jet yeah. where his Secret Service details were yes. not present for at least five of those flights. Yeah, Epstein owned a 72-acre island that had been dubbed Orgy Island, mm-hmm. where Clinton allegedly was a frequent visitor. They also called it Pedo Island. <laughs> yes, they did. They did. That's a, that's true. The, the the locals to that area, I should say. Yes, and it got its name due to the allegations that underage girls were trafficked there and provided services to Epstein's friends. Twenty six documented flights aboard this jet. Yeah, and he is closely linked to old Bill Clinton. Right. He gets finally he's getting prosecuted for what he's done to these underage girls. Yeah. And he's in, he's waiting trial. He's locked up. Then the unsealed documents come out, and big names are starting to hit the table. You know, big names, including it says potentially a former president. A former president. So yeah. Bill is undoubtedly but, going to get implicated. Yeah, he also. You have a former president in quotes, but he happens to be a member of Clinton's cabinet so i mean you can you know connect the dots there if you want and this is the second time in the past month that this guy's allegedly killed himself (laughs) i mean he tried to kill himself and he got put on a constant watch Mm -hmm. when i was in prison a constant watch consisted of or a suicide watch a guy lying in a cell in a cardboard smock something he couldn't hang himself with Usually he would just lay there butt fucking asshole naked. That's, yeah, that's usually what it is. And yeah. there would be an officer with an assigned post to stare through his window. Oh, okay. And keep an eye on him 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Gotcha. He yes, was, there see, was, ours, ours was... Ours was we had a receiving area, which the general population, once they came off the street, they came in, and you had your holding cells right there where the booking counter was. Right. The suicidal cells... Where we're a very small room with a door that was pretty much all plexiglass. Okay. There was one like steel reinforcement bar in the middle, but that's you got you got a mat to lay on to sleep. You didn't get a blanket. You didn't get. From what I remember, you I don't even think you got blues. Yeah. Like, I don't even think no. you got dressed Probably in a suicide smock. You got suicide smock, which you can't hang yourself with <laughs> no. because it's all Velcro. Uh, not only that, yes, and it's and it's very like, stiff. It's very stiff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we didn't have particularly people looking, but we also had the cameras. We had people with booking that could constantly see inside. Sure. Anybody could. You're sitting in the booking area waiting to get booked in. Any person could see if something crazy was going on. Right. So yeah. this guy. Jeffrey Epstein, he deserved to fucking die for what he, for, for what he, for, for what he did to these little girls. Right, he deserved to die. But but it just sucks that we don't get to hear. I did not. Who's want, implicated? I did not want him to take his secrets to the grave yeah, with him. They're gone. In the second that it started to seem like, all right, there's some names coming out. There's some there's some moving and some shaking. We're gonna hear some stuff. The second that starts happening, within hours. He's fucking dead. Yeah. And now they're saying, oh, well, there's some missing camera footage until they come out and say, look, here it is. Here's the missing camera footage, which I think uh, there are Man. pictures circulating the Internet of him postmortem. And he definitely looks like he hung himself. It doesn't look like he got fucking beat within an inch of his life. Yeah. It looks like he hung himself. It just. 26 trips on this jet 
and Rob Dog, I've said it a lot. Where there's smoke, there's fire, buddy. Oh, absolutely. And for someone, <clears throat> um, you know, if if I wanted to suck dick, if I wanted to suck a dick, I would go hang out with people that know where to go to suck dick. Oh, definitely. If I wanted to buy drugs, I would ask somebody that, that does drugs. If I wanted to go to an island and fuck a bunch of teenagers, <laughs> <laughs> I would hang out with a fucking billionaire that had a jet with a right. private island. Called the Pedo Islands. No, Jimmy, like we said, the peanut farmer. Yeah. He lives in a house somewhere in George, I don't know. I Fuck just watched knows. a documentary. He still lives in his old shitty house. Yeah. He's it's, like 306. <laughs> it's old fucking cracker box. Like <laughs> Section 8 housing. <laughs> it's a piece of shit. And he still lives there. And he's like, I'll just take a walk and try not to fucking die. <laughs> and to him. He's, you know, he's just having, he fucking hates Donald Trump. Just, that's fun. That's fine. Was he a Democrat? I don't know what the fuck. He's a peanut farmer, dude. Doesn't <laughs> okay. Matter. Doesn't he matter. was a peanut crap. We literally have no idea. <laughs> Who fucking knows? Nobody Nobody that's listening to this was alive at that fucking point in time. My, my point, though, <laughs> this guy, this Jimmy Carter, still has Secret Service protection. Yeah, definitely. Until he dies. And those guys that are on that detail, they say, we fucking hate this, man. <laughs> We're in the middle of nowhere. We're f- 80 miles from the closest Walmart. They smell like fucking mothballs. Yeah, he's always trying to show us his dick and ask us if it looks infected. <laughs> hey, you ever seen a peanut farmer's dick before? <laughs> What if his dick starts to look like a peanut? It looks like Mr. Planters. He's got a little hat and the monocle. Got a monocle. <laughs> Fucking cane. Oh, 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 look at this monocle on my dick. <laughs> look at my dick, boys. <laughs> hello, my honey. Hello, my honey. That was Mickey Mouse. Hang on. <laughs> yeah. That was the WB frog you just did. <laughs> right. <laughs> now, what I'm saying is he's still getting Secret Service protection. Yeah. Bill Clinton flew five times on this jet with no Secret Service protection, so it's not like you can easily just be like, all right, guys, I don't want you today. They have to be with you. That's their job, is to keep you alive. With all of the... Take a day off. So here's what I'm saying. As the President of the United States, you know, it's alleged that you know everything. Yeah. And that's why you still have Secret Service executive protection, even after you leave office, because what if you're captured by North Korea? What if you're captured by Russia? And they want to squeeze all these national security secrets out of you. You have to have that protection around you at all times. And not only that, but I mean, if it's common knowledge to locals that that's what that island's being used for, as a mainstream politician, you're going to know, first off, that that's what it's being related to, or, you know, like what what it what people are saying about it and why would you go there without fucking your protection of your own unless you had you know deviant motives uh, dude it's <laughs> it's uh and i mean i'm not and once again we're not saying that the clintons out of hand in all of these we're just saying that it's a lot of these are pretty suspicious. Now, I just don't know why someone hasn't came. F- FBI, open up! Shit. <laughs>